Well, hey there and welcome. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for joining the channel. Little bit of a different view of, of the workshop here for you, but it's because we're gonna be refinishing this sweet little um, side table. So it has uh, been cleaned and wiped down. So I always start with a clean piece of furniture. But I get asked a lot. I carry two lines of paint here in my shop. I carry uh, DIY, which is a clay-based paint. And I also carry Sweet Pickens milk paint. And I get people asking a lot about what the difference between the two are. Do they play nicely together? And so today we're going to use both paints. So we're gonna start out with Bohemian Blue from DIY. Now DIY is an all natural clay-based paint, zero VOCs, which means there's no smell, no, you know, it's water-based, easy cleanup. Um, you can blend it on a piece. It's got, uh, it's really heavily pigmented. It's like three times um, as much pigment as other paints in there. And it can be used, like if you dilute it a bit, it can be used as a stain because this one really has zero color and very little finish on it. We'll almost be staining this wood as we go. So we're gonna use this as our base. Um, and I am going to, now I would love to maybe switch out these handles, but this baby, you know, it's just kind of a bit of a pain. Maybe I'll have to. So this, this knob doesn't screw through to the back of the drawer. You will find this sometimes where this front piece is a face plate and you have to take off this to be able to take off this. Um, okay, and I, and I feel like I'm just being lazy. So what I am going to do is I am going to, and let me just show you the color, because I am gonna take the door front off. I want to keep these nice black hinges black, and I don't want to, I don't wanna to have to futz about painting around them, so it's gonna be a little easier to just take them off. Sometimes I just paint right over them when I just want them to blend into the finished piece, um, which is why I'm kinda of thinking I need to, I wanna switch out these knobs for little black knobs when I'm done. I am not going to paint the inside. Um, it's in great shape. It's like a nice, clean, natural wood. It's going to be a beautiful contrast, so I'm going to leave that. I will paint the front and back of the door. I will paint all the outside surfaces and leave the inside drawer and the inside cabinet free. But let me start by just quickly showing you that we're going to put Bohemian Blue on, which is a really lovely dark teal. Look at that color. So you can see if I really thin it out, you can almost start to see a little bit of that, that greenish pigment coming through. But we're gonna use this as our base color on this piece. I really wanna get it down in all of those little grooves on the piece. And we will be using some of the sweet pickings after. But all I'm going to do is get mm, probably maybe one and a really light second coat. So maybe let's just say two coats of this on. So I've got a nice, even solid base. And then I'll come back at you for the sweet pickings. This is going to be a really super cute, but really relatively fast and easy um, refinishing for this little, this little cabinet side table. We've got our coat of the DIY Bohemian Blue onto our little cabinet. Such a lovely color. Now, DIY dries a lot lighter. So once this is, you can just kind of see, once we would seal it or put wax on it, it would go back down to this dark color again. A little bit lighter than that, but it's gonna be very dark. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna cover it now with a light color, but I'd like to have some chipping and age on this. So we're gonna use some milk paint. And I'm gonna use Bluebird by Sweet Pickens. And hopefully we'll see some of this color peeking out from underneath this color. Now, to mix this up, it is as, it is as simple as adding water. I like to add my paint to my water 
just so then I don't end up with like paint, dry paint sticking on the bottom, etc. And I like to use warm to kind of hot water. Just, I, I just find it dissolves a little bit better. And really we're kind of looking at maybe like a, you know, one to one ratio of this. I'm just guesstimating. You can use a whisk. It's kind of better to mix it up thick and then slowly add a little bit more water than have too much to begin with. You can use a mix, oh, sorry, a whisk, and I will if I'm just mixing up like a couple of tablespoons, or you can use an immersion blender. <laughs> enough here to be able to and I'm probably gonna just add the rest of the powder so this was a sample size pack of the powder and I'm just mixing all of that in there and I'm gonna let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes so I'm just putting this into my hot water letting it sit off to the side so that it's cleaned off in the meantime and then if I need to add extra water, I can just use that water. But this will, piece of fluff, this will kind of thicken up a little bit. You want those milk solids to start to absorb that water a little bit. So I will, right now, it's this consistency. I'm gonna let this sit for, again, 15, 20 minutes, let it thicken up a little bit and then we'll come and we'll start putting our paint on over top of this. Now, once our paint has had 20 minutes to thicken up, it's about the texture of maybe a melted milkshake. And you just simply paint it on. I like to use a flat brush for this rather than like the thicker, rounder chalk paint brushes, just because I find it gives a much smoother, more even coat. So you can see me applying this just pretty smoothly, pretty easily to all of the surfaces of our little cabinet. And once that's dried, and really I only waited maybe about 10, 15 minutes for it to get mostly dry, not fully dry, then I started to apply a second coat to all of the surfaces of my cabinet. It's the next day and this piece is completely dry and it has no chipping, none. So, you know what, that's just the luck of the draw sometimes. I think it's because the piece was uh, not particularly sealed, the DIY acted as a stain, there was a lot for the milk paint to be able to grip on. I don't know, I'm making this up, who knows? Milk paint sometimes has a mind of its own. But the good thing about this is that I am going to try to force some chipping and you get to see that. Now I could just sand and distress like I would any other piece, but then it's gonna look like any other piece. Getting paint to chip, and that's what milk paint excels at, does not look like distressing. It is a look all on its own, and you can't get that look exactly with sandpaper. So I'm gonna be out of the frame here, but you don't care. What you want to see is how do we do this? And I'm going to show you and then I'll stop the camera and I'll bring you in closer. But what we are going to do is we're going to wet some, some sections. Okay, so we're going to re kind of activate some of that milk paint in some areas, get some water on it, and then I'm going to speed the drying process because I'm gonna take my, it's a little, little more than I need. I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'm gonna dry it fast. So that's what I'm gonna take you in for because hopefully it starts chipping and you can see it happening.
Now that we've got all that beautiful chipping and crackling, it's time to sand. For this, I'm taking a 320 grit sandpaper, wrapping around a block, and I am just sanding. It looks hard, but I'm doing it very lightly to be able to release any of the loose flakes and be able to get a little bit of distressing happening. So I'm making sure that I get some of that detail all over the piece. And then once I have finished doing the sanding, I will take a dry lint-free cloth and wipe it all down so that I can remove all of that sanding dust, make sure that when I go to seal the piece, it's nice and clean and I'm not gonna have any of that dust kind of impacting any of the smoothness of my finish. Once your piece is all sanded and wiped down and you can see how much dust comes off of onto your cloth, so don't skip that step. It's time to seal. Now, the one thing that I did wanna mention about using the heat gun is your paint can burn if you don't keep the heat gun moving. So don't have it sitting on one spot too long. Keep it moving nice and slow and you'll get some of that chipping happening and then you can just sand it. And again, you can do more. I just wanted to make sure that some of that um, DIY paint that Bohemian Blue was gonna echo through. And it may seem as though there's not much of it showing until we go to seal. Now, I'm gonna be using Clear Wax by DIY. Um, Sweet Pickens has an awesome Clear Wax as well. Either would be fine. I mean, you know, really, if you have a different brand of, of Clear Wax at home, use that, right? I mean, I have what I have here in the shop because I love it, but it doesn't mean that I'm gonna tell you not to use a different one because I certainly would. Let me just pull you down a little bit more. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our clear wax and we're going to apply a nice even coat over our piece. And then we are going to take a clean rag, not the dusty one. I don't wanna put the dust back on. We're gonna take a clean lint-free rag and wipe it back. So just so that I get the excess wax off of it. And then I'm gonna let the wax dry. And usually I do that overnight. I let it dry, I buff it again, just to be able to smooth it out, shine it up a little bit if I want. So you can take a buffing um, cloth, you can take a buffing brush, you can take, I actually, because this is all flat, I will use um, a little buffing brush on a, a motorized, it's almost like a, a drill with a flat head. <laughs> if that makes sense, I'll take a pic of me using it. But just to be able to buff it out and just because I have arthritis in my shoulder and <laughs> I try not to uh, do too many things that are gonna aggravate it so that I can keep doing all of the things, if that makes sense. But you can see how beautiful and aged this little door looks, right? To go on the front. It's just the right amount of chippiness. Um, it's just got like the little wear patterns. It did it in its, it did it in its own little spot. I mean, obviously I, I directed a little bit because of where I put the water, but um, some places it didn't do any, and then other places it did did a, a, a bunch, but it's gonna be the perfect look. So what I do have is um, the rest of this to be able to wax up. Once um, it's wiped down and dried a little bit, I will buff it and reassemble it. I have some black little knobs instead of the wooden knobs that came with it. We have the black hinge, hinge hardware to put back on. And then our piece is done. And I think it's gonna be super sweet. Anyway, this gives you a good idea of what it's gonna look like and how much some of the colors deepen. And you can see that it really pulls out some of that underlying Bohemian Blue. You're always gonna get your base color echoing up through your paint, especially if you don't do like five, five coats of that final color to block it. And I love using that base paint deliberately 
to be able to create the look and the effect that I'm, I'm going for. So here, I didn't want that light pine showing. I really wanted that darker blue. And these two paint lines play together beautifully. I hope that you picked up a couple of little tips along the way, both in terms of not being locked into just using one paint line on one piece of furniture that you can mix and match a little bit, depending upon the look that you're after. And also, if you're using some milk paint and you don't get the chipping that you want, how to be able to force that a little bit. It's a cool trick. Just make sure that you keep that heat gun moving so that you don't burn your paint instead of just chipping it. As always, I look forward to hearing what you think of this one. If there are other paint techniques that you're hoping to see in the future, let me know. I'm open to trying to demonstrate anything that I can for you guys. So as always, love to hear from you and I am looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.